So from our definition of a vector field, we can naturally conclude that the gradient is an excellent example of a vector field. So let's recall what the gradient is. So you want to remember the gradient represents the operation or the vector operation of taking the partial derivatives. So we say that the gradient is the vector operation of taking the partial derivative. So assuming that f is in R3, the components of the gradient are dx, dy, dz. And once we incorporate that function in here, if we say the gradient of some surface f, now we have the partial derivative of f with respect to x, the partial derivative of f with respect to y, and the partial derivative of f with respect to z. But the gradient on its own simply represents the operation of taking these partial derivatives with respect to the function's variables. So since the gradient vector, del f, points in the direction of maximum increase or steepest ascent, or also it could point in the direction of maximum decrease, aka steepest descent, on a surface, f and r3, at some point p0, the collection of the gradient vectors is called the gradient vector field. And this is all an application of the directions of change in the gradients that we saw back in chapter 13. So keeping that in mind, let's recall an application from directions of change and the gradient. So we want to suppose that phi represents the temperature of a conducting material. And we want to let P0 defined by the ordered pair AB, such that the gradient of phi does not equal zero. So we recall that then the gradient of phi at this point, AB, is a vector pointing in the direction at which temperature increases most rapidly. And that's because we have the gradient at that point is positive. We also know from basic physical law that heat diffuses in the direction of the vector field where temperature decreases most rapidly. So in other words, in the direction of the vector field minus del phi. So we can further conclude from this that in other words, heat flows down the gradient from hot to cold regions. And again, we looked at this example briefly with directions of change and the gradient back in chapter 13. And so now we're ready to officially define the gradient vector field and potential functions. So looking at these two definitions simultaneously, we let z be the function phi of x, y, and w be equal to the function phi of x, y, z, be differentiable and continuous scalar valued functions, so constant valued functions, in R2 and R3 respectively. So in our first definition here, the vector field defined by the gradient of the scalar function, vec vector capital F of del phi, is called the gradient field. And one little note we want to make to ourselves, again, that we observed this back in chapter 13 is that since our gradient field is defined by del phi, our capital vector f of del phi, this is always orthogonal to the surface. So always orthogonal, normal, perpendicular to the surface. It could also, we should say, uh, surface phi at some point p naught. So the gradient field represented by the vector capital F being defined as the gradient of phi is always perpendicular to the surface at some point P naught. 
We could also say that it's orthogonal to the level curve. So in addition to this, we have that the function phi itself is called the potential function. So again, the collection of the gradient vectors is what makes up the gradient field here that we attain from the potential function for that gradient field, capital vector F. So we're ready now to go ahead and explore some examples.